एम जी मोटर इंडिया प्लांट इन हलोल गुजरात हैज सीन एन इम्पॉर्टेंट इंडिशन ओवर द पास्ट ईयर एंड वी स्टैंडिंग राइट इन एट एज यू कैन सी बिहाइंड मी दिस इज एम जी इज बैटरी असेंबली शॉप विद कंपनी पुट्स टूगेदर द बैटरी पैक्स फॉर द कॉमेट एंड विन जो प्रो विच लॉन्च जस्ट दिस ईयर लेट्स टेक अ लुक एट हाउ द बैटरी पैक्स फॉर बोथ ऑफ दीज ईवीज आर असेंबल्ड हेयर But before we dive in an important note about the workforce MG India has long prided itself on being an equal opportunities employer striving for a 50-50 split between male and female employees that shines through in the battery assembly shop where women apparently account for 80 to 90% of the workforce so the first step of the process comprises these individual LFP cells the bedrock of each and every battery pack Now MG India doesn't make these cells here they are imported hence for the name battery assembly shop but still it does reduce costs at the next station these cells are tested one by one to ensure they're outputting the correct voltage and insulation resistance the latter being quite important to keep temperatures in check quite a lot of cells go through the station every single day considering the Winsor Pro's 52.9 kilowatt hour battery pack has 98 of them and the Comet 17.3 kilowatt hour battery has 36 the technicians then apply insulating foam over every cell yet another safety measure the cells are then grouped together and fastened using rivets this cluster of cells is then placed inside a large metal tray which forms half the cover of the battery pack The cells sit right on top of these flat pipes with circulate coolant and take heat away from the cluster. Another round of testing ensues which takes about 30 to 40 seconds after which the technicians place these small aluminum pieces called bus bars across the terminals of every single cell. These bus bars are dropped into place using this large sort of stencil and as you might have guessed they form the circuit through which current starts flowing throughout the battery pack. Now after the aluminum bus bars are fitted to the battery pack it's carted all the way over here uh, to the laser welding machine now you need a laser welding machine for this process because it requires immense precision uh, the weld area is actually 18 mm in diameter it's that small so you need the laser welding machine to perform extremely precise welds trust the welding process that i just showed you the battery pack is then brought out here and uh, the weld strength is essentially tested uh, by scooping up the bus bar uh and in case uh, there are any defects it goes back into the welding machine uh as you can see after the scoop test has been done they hammer the bus bars back into shape and then this is then uh it then goes for another round of uh laser welding now the second round of laser welding is for these little nodes all around the battery pack as you might have noticed this process is done manually because the weld area is much smaller this time around about 1 to 2 mm so you need even more immaculate precision the welded connection points are then tested after which technicians start fitting peripherals like cables gaskets harnesses and the like on this line the battery management software module or bms module which is the brain of the battery pack is also fitted One more round of testing and the battery pack is then carted off to the charging and discharging station. Now charging and discharging or CND is one of the most crucial steps in the battery assembly process. Here a large simulation machine runs the battery through a charge discharge cycle. The cells are first discharged all the way down to 0% and then charged back up to 55%. Why 55% you may ask? Well MG says this is a safety protocol to ensure safe transport of the battery pack throughout the facility. Moreover, the CND cycle already takes three and a half hours to complete. Imagine how long it would take if the battery pack were to be charged to 100%. That would certainly reduce the battery assembly shop's output, which currently stands at about 140 battery packs per day. This is the penultimate step in the process after the charging and discharging uh, process has been completed. Um, now, uh, the technicians bring the battery pack out here. They apply this grey strip for waterproofing, and after that. they put a metal cover onto the battery pack to fully seal it and then prepare it for the final round of testing this is where the technicians perform their final checks and validation on the fully sealed battery pack before it's loaded up on this pallet and shipped off to the wider assembly shop as you can tell by this neat hard hat i'm wearing we're in the general assembly shop now where this is one of the 140 or so battery packs that the battery assembly shop dispatches This will now be loaded onto this automated carrier which will then take it to one of the many winds approaches on the production line to be fitted. 
I quite like that automated carrier thing. It does a little drift to get back in underneath this car. And uh, now you can see the batteries all lined up perfectly to be uh, fitted underneath. Uh, and alongside that, the rear axle is also going to be fitted here. As far as battery fitment goes, it's the very, very last step of the process. Here, the technicians use DT tools to uh, torque the nuts that will affix the body uh, and the body and the battery together. And here it is, one Windsor EV Pro fresh off the production line with the locally made 52.9 kilowatt hour battery. Did you think this rundown was interesting? Let us know in the comments below and subscribe to the Autocar India YouTube channel.